What's your favorite picture? Like you love the picture so much, it's actually printed on film, maybe even framed or in a photo album. Maybe it's a picture from years ago taken with an actual, wait for it, a camera, not a phone. One of my favorite pictures is a simple impromptu snapshot of me and my grandfather sitting on the couch together. Judging by my mullet, yes, I just said that, I'm thinking it was 1992, maybe 1993. Pictures used to be an event. It took effort to make sure the camera had film and the batteries weren't dead, your finger wasn't over the lens, and of course, the eye staring contest with the camera, don't blink. But what I liked about taking pictures with a real camera is it meant it was something special. Something you really wanted to remember. Something you, you wanted to just hold in your hand to remember it by. Even waiting for the one hour print felt like an eternity. And then, warm off the printer, there it is. The photo, the memory in your hand. The memories of that moment relived in your mind. As you smile, maybe cry, you reminisce. The whole process was special. Now, that's not to say the 10,000 pictures you've taken with your phone aren't as sentimental or carry such stories. But truth told, how often do you go back through the random quick shots of years past? The cute puppy you saw at a park, or maybe the cool latte art, or if you're like me, the parking deck level and number where you parked your car at the airport. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful to have the convenience in my back pocket at all times, but if there's one thing a quote-unquote camera taught us, it was to be aware, to be in the moment, to be present, mindful. I've never fully understood the phrase living in the moment, or even to some degree, mindfulness. So I decided to spend some time to learn what it meant and how could I make it life applicable. It's fine to know something, but to actually live or walk through that something, it's a whole different perspective. So this episode is about understanding the moments in life the ones we want to take a picture of, the ones we'll never forget, the moments we print and we frame and we hang on a wall or set on our desk, not in fear of forgetting what your kids look like, but because it's just what you need when you're cross-eyed from spreadsheets or writing that last email of the day. Glancing over and seeing a smile in a frame brings you back to life's treasures, even if only for a moment. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. Side note, the irony of this episode is this morning I actually called my mom to simply say hello. You should do the same. Not my mom, yours. Having already written the episode, I found it interesting when I asked... Hey, what are you up to? And she replied, just going through some old photos. One being a picture of my sitting in my dad's lap when I was around four or five as he was reading me a book. The picture instantly came to memory with even its worn corners and creases, telling how often it's been pulled from the album over the years. I love that picture. Just like I love the picture of my grandfather and I on the couch, or my wedding day, or holding my kids for the first time. Those moments in time that make you smile just thinking about it. And while this episode sounds like a grand invitation down memory lane, it's actually not. It's about what picture hasn't been taken yet. What memories are waiting for you to capture on camera. Some we can plan, such as a holiday event or a momentous occasion like graduating or getting married, but the impromptu moments, 
like sitting on my dad's lap as he's reading a book, are the sparks of life you can't write in your calendar. So here's something I want you to think about. Let's go back to your favorite picture that I mentioned in the beginning of this episode. Now, what pictures have you taken after that photograph? Life, I imagine, didn't end with that one picture. There have been many more memories since, even if taken with your iPhone. The marathon you ran, or the souffle you bombed but still tastes great, or the friends you made serving at a food bank. These are all moments to pause, look around, and say, huh, this is worth framing. And if we took the moment to pause and recognize, you would be amazed how these actually happen more than you realize. I'm not going to lie. It's easy to get into the habit of remembering yesteryear and how life just seemed easier or better back then. I wish I could go back in time and be in that moment, you say to yourself. And while that's completely valid, as I've had those days many times, don't discount the moment you're in right now. I hope you heard that. Don't discount the moment you are in right now. Those photos on the wall are a timestamp of a special time in your life. Special, very special time in your life. A celebration, a marriage, an accomplishment, but... And this is the difficult part. These photos were those moments. And as much as we want to relive those moments, those memories, they were meant for that season. I would give the world to sit with my grandfather on the couch and ask him all sorts of questions about life that would probably make sense now, but that moment was meant for that time. And no matter how long I sit on that very couch and wait for his return, I know it will never happen, which is what makes these pictures so significant. They tell the story of our life in that freeze frame, that beautiful moment, and it's to be hung as a reminder of how special it was. But those moments are meant to be remembered, not relived. Oof. That one hurts me even when I say it, so I'm going to have to say it again, at least for my own sake. The pictures on the walls are meant to be remembered, not relived. There are new stories awaiting, new inspirations, new hellos, new paths, new day, night, tomorrow. Don't discount the moment you're in right now. The people who want to be with you, the meal shared with the neighbor, the chocolate chip cookies made with the grandkids. You didn't think I would miss the chance to mention cookies now, would you? Don't let yesterday's memories overshadow today's surprises. I'm going to say that again. Don't let yesterday's memories overshadow today's surprises. Yes, the days are long and the struggles are real, but what we forget about those framed moments hung on the wall, those accomplishments, are the struggles getting to that photo, the setbacks before the beaming smiles, the, I don't know if I can do this, turning into the, I can't believe I just did that. Yesterday looks great on film, but today looks even better in person. Did you hear that? Yesterday looks great on film, but today looks even better in person. Cherish the memories, but keep making them, because who knows what photographs may wind up on your desk in the months to come. Tonight, before going to bed, go through your day and think what parts were worth framing. It could be as simple as making the perfect cup of tea or as rich as a random day trip to the beach. 
just to feel the sand in your toes. Some pictures, you have your eyes closed or doing an ugly laugh. Some days, the light is just right, your hair just so, and you look like a magazine. But no matter the day, you're in the picture. You're in the moment. And each day, honestly, that's all you can ask of yourself. To be in the picture. Be there. Your life's moments are waiting to be made, framed and hung for you to see that what's in front of you today can be the best photograph you've taken yet. Yesterday looks great on film, but today looks even better in person. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.